Yes, the ETF is approved. Yes, crypto's going mainstream. Yes, we are on the cusp of the biggest bull run ever. <laughs> Five, 10, 50 X's, all the good stuff. It will rain from the sky. Congratulations, you did it. But I gotta tell you, I am done. I am sick of making these videos. You people make me sick. Yes, you, you fat, smelly virgin who's probably watching me from the toilet right now. Thank you so much for including me in your special time. It's always been my dream to sit around and give people investing advice while they lay off their hangover sh Thank you. You see, a few months ago, I came back online out of the goodness of my heart to help you people out and said, hey, these coins are going to go up. They went up. But now I can't get away. Now I can't get any relief. Everyone is like, oh, Becker. You're so woke, you're so jacked, you're so famous, your calls are so hot right now. Yes, they're good, I'm aware. Thank you anyways though. And now I'm in this perpetual hell. It's 2024, the ETF's approved, we're getting more eyeballs than ever, and I cannot get any relief. Instead of getting in the gym, instead of fixing your diet, instead of, I don't know, talking to a girl for the first time and losing your virginity, you fat, smelly, unfed, scrawny lads are here again, trying to make 10, 20, 50 X's, dumping on your Uber drivers and grandmothers. When is it enough? When can the most woke empty house crypto fat advice guy with a great body who's also PG and family friendly, when can he take a rest? And wow, what an original unique time to get in. The market has been like an Arby's serving hot, cheesy, triple beef, Taco Supreme special, butt blaster Supremes, and now you're trying to get in line for the bathroom after the lunch special. I'm sorry, I got news for you. That line is gonna be longer than getting into a Taylor Swift concert, a real symphony of farts. And it's my job, yet again, to save you. Because the most woke, I see you. I see you there in your time of need. I see you there saying, please sir, me familia, thy child thus ateth the Arby's cheesy beanie butt blaster supreme. We're not gonna make it home and we cannot afford new pants. Because I'm a f***ing great guy, I'm gonna take mercy on you and your fat overfed child. I'm gonna walk you around back and show you where the VIPs do their business. Jay-Z, Tom Brady, and that drug act that used to host Blue's Clues, this is where they all get dead. <laughs> And look, while there is going to be more gains in the projects we are already in, it's 2024. There are a lot of new and undiscovered projects. And in this video, what I'm going to do is not only tell you exactly where the market's going to go, because as you know, I'm a goddamn genius, but I'm going to show you some of the best places to get in if we bull, ranging from kind of safe, sure bets to these new projects, these new undiscovered things that can deliver the X's that you finally need to buy that fat little creature you call your child new pants. So if you would kindly show me just an ounce of respect, could you could you please get off the toilet, pull up your trousers, maybe go somewhere where it's quiet, you can focus. We gotta talk about what the market's gonna do in 2024. And so without further ado, let's load up coin market cap and deliver some of that great low quality content you've come to know and love. So the most important thing we have to talk about first is I know you're like, hey, Alex, yo, just, just give me those 50x coins, man. I don't need to know anything about investing. I don't need to know anything about trading. The rest of the markets are just, just give me coins. We can do that. You can skip to the end of this video and just do that and lose all your money. You can go stick your dick in the pencil sharpener and you walk away with a mangled dick that looks like Sylvester Stallone's face. By all means, man, you can do that. And then be sure to 100% blame it on a random guy you saw on YouTube, a.k.a. me. That's, if that's your life strategy, go for it. But if we really want to kill it here, the number one thing we have to do before trading the coins I'm going to talk about in this video, whether the bigger, safer coins or the, even the really risky ones I think can do 2050X, is you have to understand the overall market and how it's moving. The overall market is the flow of the ocean. If we're going to be catching little fish, little dumpster turds at the bottom of the ocean, we need to understand how the weather's going to be up here. And so we need to talk about the ETF and where the market's going to go right now. And so that's what we're about to do. That being said, please read this disclaimer. No, seriously, go back, pause it, read it. The chances of you actually making money in crypto are extremely low. This is not investing advice. In fact, if I could give you my actual advice, I would tell you, you are likely going to lose money here. I can't stress enough, this is gambling. This is extremely risky. This is not investing advice. But if you must get in and you're a sick, disgusting individual with a mental disorder like me who can't stay away, well, all right, let's roll. So like always, let's start with the big orange coin. Again, I don't trade Bitcoin. I don't own any Bitcoin. I don't even like Bitcoin. But you have to be able to react to Bitcoin if you're going to do the stuff we're going to be talking about here. We're going to drill down into the lower coins like I talked about that we can actually invest in. They're going to deliver the much higher returns. But you got to watch the big stupid coin. That's just the rules of the game. I don't make them. And so what's going on with Bitcoin right now is very important. So you can see we're, we're way up for the year. Bitcoin's been charging and stuff like that. And everyone's been anticipating the ETF, which just got approved. So where does that leave us right now? 
So everybody up to this point right here has been waiting and investing based on the ETF, thinking it's going to go explode afterwards. Now everybody's thinking it's a sell the news event. Nobody really actually knows what's going on right now including myself. So obviously everybody's saying the ETF right now is a sell the news event. I think that is really stupid because this isn't a sell the news event. People are dumping right now because we, we got up to 48K and now they're taking profits on this massive run up right here. That being said, if this is a sell the news event, it means we're just gonna go all the way back down to 20K, 12K. Everybody's about to lose all their money. Very upsetting. Ah, oh God, you're in crypto. It's part of the fun. If your life savings aren't annihilated five times this year, you're not really trying that hard. Also, just real quick, I don't always have time to make these videos. If you want to get my crypto views a lot faster, follow me at ZSS Becker. If you're watching just these videos, you're getting the sloppy seconds compared to my Twitter. It takes me two seconds to make a tweet. It takes me forever to make these videos. On top of that, if you want some more wholesome content, follow my Instagram at 4 Becker. I built companies worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I have pretty good health. I've, I've basically compounded my mind to get what I want out of life. If you want actual content based on that, follow me on Instagram at 4 Becker. I don't even, I won't even sell you a course. But is this a sell the news event? Should we be expecting it to go lower? Well, first thing we need to be looking at is, and I know you crypto baboons never do this. It's, it's like there's no market outside of crypto that exists. We need to be looking at the S&P 500. Why do we need to be looking at the S&P 500? This thing needs to stay semi-stable or keep going up for this to keep going on in crypto. If the S&P 500 is crashing, we get a recession, this, this is over. It's done. We're not going to see Bitcoin charging. And if we don't see Bitcoin charging, we're not going to see the rest of the market charging. And in crypto, it is only going one way in the lower coins below Bitcoin. If they're not going up, they're going down. And so if the S&P 500 starts having a really bad day, we start going back to 4,500, 4,200. I, I don't think we're going below 4,000. However, I'm the worst Bitcoin and S&P 500 shot caller ever. So I'm not trying to call these things right now. I'm just watching them and reacting to them. Because this is the music. We're playing a game of musical chairs. If this music stops, we're in trouble. So coming back to Bitcoin. So is this a sell the news event? Why would it be? The ETF right now allows more money to flow into Bitcoin than ever before, and it makes it accessible and easy to hold for people outside of crypto. So look, I know everybody here watching this video, you're probably not new to self-custody. Actually, you probably are. Most people just keep all their Bitcoin on Coinbase or something like that because you guys are wild, savage animals who enjoy the thrill of dipping your balls into a tank full of piranhas. I don't like to do that. I actually self-custody all my crypto, but whatever. If you are holding large amounts of crypto, no 60 year old person, no retirement fund, no pension fund is going to be keeping millions of dollars of Bitcoin on some cold wallet. They're not going to be self custing that amount of money. They're just not going to do it. 90% of crypto natives are not even comfortable doing this. I hate storing logs, keeping large sums of money in crypto self custody. You lose your passwords, you lose your seed phrase, you make a mistake. Or if you're a bored ape, you get a message from a random stranger on the internet, poof, all your internet money is gone. It's a tough conundrum. There are so many things about the ETF that are bullish, but the thing number one is it allows large funds retirement funds, pension funds, and older individuals with lots of money to actually put money into crypto without having to self-custody it. No 65-year-old man is going to buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and then take it off Coinbase and put it into a cold wallet. They're just not going to do it. However, they can go to their financial advisor now and say, hey, let's add Bitcoin. Let's put 1% of my net worth into that. That's like two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 for a lot of older individuals or 10000 50000 You get the point of what I'm trying to say right here. So, this isn't a sell the news event because this allows more people to just get into it than ever. And if the S&P is still charging, people are going to keep coming to crypto. They're going to keep storing money in Bitcoin. They're going to keep doing the same thing they've always been doing. Bitcoin is not going to reverse unless we see the S&P 500 reverse. I just don't see it happening. And as more people make money in the stock market, we're going to see the same exact thing that we saw happening in 2019 to 2020 to 2021. People are going to say, oh, I'm making money in the stock market. Where else can I make more money? And then they're going to come to Bitcoin. And then they're going to come down to the lower altcoins and then eventually they're going to end up or at least some of them are going to end up developing the, the truly terrible addiction and up in the depths of hell of crypto which is where you're at right now this is this is about as bad as it gets if you're watching this channel you ever seen any of those lifetime movies where like the uncle or the brother becomes a drug act and they find him in the crack den and you walk in there's just like on the walls and people wearing like 50 day old underwear just lying on the floor just coughing bathing in tequila 
this is where you're at right now. And instead of getting help, instead of growing up and fixing your life, you're like, hey, you know what? Let's see where this goes. Life's full of adventures. Let's see if I can find it in the crypto crack den of hell. Come, come closer. Yes, let's let's enjoy. So that's how it's going to work. And so you have to understand the difference between a sell the news event and a... Uh, a big event that's just happening right now, like the halving and whatnot. There is still an absolutely awesome narrative to keep buying Bitcoin. The digital gold, it's, it's all still there. Chance for profits are still substantial in Bitcoin. Now that it's also been given more reputation ever before by the ETF, but now people can buy it easier. So the whole trifecta there for investing in Bitcoin and making more money than the stock market and having access to it, it's all there. What a sell the news event is like is like this. So I don't know how long you've been in crypto, but back in, I don't know, 2019, 2020, there was this group of Chuck E. Cheese employees, okay? And they were also really in the cuckolding. They were called the cuckold Chuck E. Cheese boys. It was a very weird gang. They would barge in the bars, bunch of five foot one, the four foot nine manlets, all trying to find their wives on a Friday night while they were out with their boyfriends. They would just storm in the bars. This is what they did all the time. And any free time they had off their shifts from Chuck E. Cheese and cleaning up kids in the ball pits this is what they would do and they would all just roll around town and motorized rollerblades just little five foot one manlets all grumpy because they never know where their wife is just rollerblading around town bar to bar but the thing is because all their wives boyfriends were already paying for all their wife stuff and usually the rent these these chucky e. cheese employees they had tons of reserve cash and so they finally all got around they said how can we get our wives back how can we get them to stop other dudes and they're like we should get rich and they're like all right how do we get rich we create this like crypto ponzi scheme layer one and so all these five foot one manlets with pot bellies they all got together and they tried to find the best crypto layer one they could find of course they settled for the one with the absolute dumbest lamest name of all time cardano it sounds like an unsuccessful italian restaurant that ironically would be next door to a Chuck E. Cheese. So they were all in on it. But the thing is, people underestimated the amount of money that these manlets had stored up. Because yes, they might have been five foot one. They might have had penises that could only be jacked off with tweezers. But boy, could they save money. And so all of them got in. They got into this thing called Cardano. And they put all their money in. And Cardano went absolutely nuclear absolutely nuclear but these manlets never having a win in their life never actually having one victory ever they didn't know how to stay humble they didn't know how to say you know what i've been successful before and i remember not to get cocky no this is their first time and so they all got into it it all shut up and then the entire internet the cardano community this this old crusty pizza shop said we're gonna pass this gogan update it's gonna change everything once gogan goes live oh my god everybody's gonna get in it changes how people use the network everybody is gonna come and start using cardano and so all the man that's they form the man pyramid with speaker phones and start screaming to the mountains gogan is coming gogan is coming and so everyone in crypto that has a dick past a centimeter said you know what it's about time we make money off these manlets they are just they're so stupid and so there was news of this Gogan update coming. And so what happened? People got really excited about the Gogan update coming. He got really excited. He got really excited. And then Gogan passed and Cardano became faster than ever. It was incredible. And their wives said, wow, that poor decision I made 15 years ago. Maybe I should reconsider. Maybe I should stop telling all my friends I'm divorced even though I'm not. And at this time, I made a video telling all the manlets, hey, this is a sell the news event. You should probably sell. I got more rage at me than ever. I, I'm banned from all Chuck E. Cheeses. I go in there, those Christmas elves, they're gonna try and kick me out. And then what happened? Cardano went down and it never came back up. Why? Because this is what a sell the news event looks like. Jokes and stories aside, the Cardano holders came after me on Twitter yesterday, so I just had to really deliver <laughs> a spicy monologue towards them. Fuck you. But seriously, we saw this in almost every coin last bull run. Coins would go up due to some big news that was coming, some big change. And then people would come up here, and as soon as it happened, they went down. Now, why did this go down? Jokes aside, we saw this in every coin. This isn't a Cardano particular problem. But with Cardano in this instance right here, there was no new narrative to buy for. What we're trading in crypto is not technology. When the technology changes or updates in crypto, we're still at bar one. No one's using it. No one's, no, one, no one's mass using this. No mass government hopped on. There's no demand for these coins outside of the fact that the coins go up. And 99.9% .9 of projects. Bitcoin actually doesn't have this problem. Ethereum almost doesn't have this problem because it's so damn expensive to use. It's broken tech, but there you go. But outside of those two cryptos, every single one of them doesn't have any demand past it. Hey, I think this number is going to go up. So when we hit this point right here, it's a sell to news because what news is coming in the future is going to make it go up? 
None. None. It's, it's done. The update's done. So it comes back to bar one where it was before. Nobody's using it. This isn't just a Cardano problem. Cardano holders are going to freak out and say, he hates Cardano. No, this is with like every coin. It's just that Cardano's have a community of dudes that I'm taller than when I'm sitting down who just live at home with pizza crushed all over their chest, getting beat up by their five-year-old kid and being forced to live under the staircase like Harry Potter and pee in a corner. A weird situation they're in. But every community had to go through this kind of stuff and this is just something you should look for. When a coin picks up and everyone says it's going to be sold the news, sold the news, you have to ask yourself, is there a reason to keep investing in it? Is there still potential for gains? Well, if we go look at Bitcoin, yes, there very much is. Can Bitcoin still make you tons of profit? Yes. Is S&P still going up? Yes. Is this the first place you're going to turn after the stock market to make bigger gains in the stock market? Yes. And is it more accessible than ever? Yes. This isn't a sell the news event in my book. So that being said, let's talk about where the market's going to go then. So in my opinion, I think we're looking at something like this. A lot of people think, you know, we new bull runs starting now. I don't, I think we're going to grind up for the rest of the year. I think we're going to see something that's really boring and price action kind of like this. Minus the COVID crash right here. Okay, I don't think we're going to get some black swan. We could get a black swan. That's the whole point of a black swan is you're like, I don't think we're going to get a black swan. And then you get a black swan. I don't think the government's going to try and pull COVID 2.0 again. But I don't know. They're, they've, they've been really... Just pulling poisonous snakes out of their butt when nobody expects it. So that's a visual right there. Just Joe Biden pulling a poisonous snake out of his butt. But outside of this COVID dip right here, I think we could just grind straight this way for the rest of the year. I think we could grind up just a little bit. We could even grind down just a little bit. But I think this is coming here at some point. This, this bull run that we're seeing right here or bull run like we're seeing right here is coming at some point in 2024 or 2025. And even if we go back down, even if we, we eat a big cosmic turd right now, I don't think we're going back uh, to the lows we saw before. So for example, Solana got down to like 12 bucks uh, right here, okay? I don't think we're going back to that. I think we're, we're going 50% down tops if we go back down. So, you have to also understand that when we were talking about the projects that we get in and here or that we get into on this channel which is primarily gaming with like a side of ai this is where i think all the returns are going to be and guess what they have been they have been if you got in two months ago when i talked about it, you were rolling and you were flush with cash and you have a great entry position you could just hold and just kick back and do nothing for example i, I didn't need to make videos the last few weeks because there's nothing to do like you just we got into the right coins we got in them 10 percent off lows you just sit there. That's it, buddy. You can you can go on vacation. You can move about your life. You don't have to be sitting here smashing your dick and making yourself go crazy with anxiety. It's not going to have any impact. So, for example, uh, literally early this year, I told everybody, you know, get in the super about eight bucks or eight eight cents. It's at fifty cents right now. Now, can we go back to twenty five cents, thirty cents? Yeah, but I mean, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident this is a lows in super. And all the other gaming coins and AI coins and the things we're about to talk about, I think, where the real X's are going to be here in a second. Full transparency also before I talk about it, and I'll mention this other coins, I'm a massive investor in Super. I'm an advisor over there. There's massive incentive for me to want this to go up, which is why you shouldn't buy any coins that I mentioned in my video. Just, just go find your own coins. Use the logic I'm using here. There's so many other coins. Use my strategies, not the coins I'm talking about. You're not going to do that. 2% of people on this channel, they're actually going to make it will, and they're going to do really great. But yeah, that's what I see happening the rest of the year. I know everybody wants me to be like, oh, Bitcoin's going to 75K in the next few months. I don't see that happening either. It could, and that would be awesome. That, that'd be great. My expectation is flat, down a little bit, grind up a little bit, almost nothing, which means it's time for us to either do, and this, this makes for terrible content, like what am I gonna talk about the rest of the year? Do absolutely nothing if you got in with the bags we have now, or it's maybe time for you to start taking position. Because if we go back and look at the highs of some of these projects, now we have to take into account market cap, um, of these projects, these these projects probably are never going back to these all-time highs, okay? Because the market caps were different. This was not fully diluted. We're way more fully diluted right here. If you don't understand how that works, this is going to sound nuts, but maybe take two seconds to understand the terms and valuations of things you're throwing thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. I don't know. That's crazy, but maybe do that. And even with that in mind, we still have a long way to go on these. You know, Axie could go back up significantly right here. And so we're still really far away from like bull run valuations. And when Bitcoin charges, 
I see knock on wood, $100,000, $150,000 Bitcoin. Everybody's going to think it's going to go to $250,000, $300,000. The rule of Bitcoin is you always just take where people think it's going to go and cut it in half. <laughs> it's, it's my stupid strategy. People last run said it's going to $100,000. When it got to like sixty, sixty-nine thousand, dollars that's $60,000. I just, I just started taking profits a whole lot. Because everybody thinks there's going to be some blow off top and they're going to get some nice exit. Just take the profits when you have them. I have two videos on this channel about buying smaller coins and selling smaller coins and how to get out profitable in them. You should watch those. They're very useful. It goes into my buying and selling strategies. And so when Bitcoin does that, the entire world is going to be like drunk. They're just going to be drunk. And there's they're going to be pushing an Ethereum ETF. I wouldn't be surprised if they push a Solana ETF. BlackRock and all these institutions are going to see how easily they can pump these markets and manipulate them. And I think we're going to see a, the stupidest tulip mania bull run that we've ever seen before. And like I've stated so many times, this takes us into the coins we're actually going to talk about right here. I think the highest multiples, yes, I think you can get the 3 4x on Bitcoin. Ah, in crypto, that's embarrassing in, in a bull run. It's like stealing your mother's minivan and then driving five miles per hour over the speed limit while playing a highway to the danger zone and then taking a video on Instagram and showing all your friends. They're gonna be like, what the, what the this guy's a dork. No, you want to go and get 10, 20 Xs in a bull run. That's my goal. I'm not, I'm not I, then you can reinvest in Bitcoin, you can put it whatever, but Bitcoin's more like a crypto bank account more than anything else. Now, don't get me wrong, Forexes are super cool. That's what everybody else in the world's gonna see when they're moving into it and trying to beat the stock market. But we wanna get into the lower coins. In particular, where I think the biggest gains are gonna be, it's going to be in gaming, gambling, and AI. And that's really where I'm just 100% investing in. Now, there are some really cool layer ones, layer twos, and other infrastructure projects that I am also investing in. I, I, I throw a little bit of different things in there, but 90% of my portfolio is gonna be gaming with a side of AI, ooh, and then some other cool projects I like to get into. And also just, I think I'm gonna do extremely well just based on how I saw the market perform last bull run. And so what I'm going to do now is talk about those coins. Again, before I talk about the coins, quick little, Let's get real for a second, talk. Read the disclaimer again, pause the video, read it. This is extremely dangerous. Two, a lot of the coins I'm gonna mention, I'm heavily invested in or an advisor for, I work with the project. So of course I'm incentivized and I want the coins to go up, but we have to be super real and transparent here. This is incredibly risky. I'm gonna be talking about projects I like, and if I like a project, I try and get involved with it and invest as much as I possibly can in it. If the project goes up, of course, I'm happy about that. That's where my bags are. To use the strategies and thought process I use in these videos, because I use these coins as examples of how I'm thinking. That said, so you don't have to wonder, there is a link on my Twitter that shows every project I'm heavily invested in or an advisor for or working with. And I'm telling you to use the strategies to find other coins. If you get your dick cut off buying something that I talk about in this video, that's on you. If you're gonna enter the arena, be prepared to fight. This isn't some friendly game where everybody walks away and profit. 85% of people lose money. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna start at bigger coins like I always do and kind of work my way down. We have some other things I've added to the portfolio and some things I've been seeing that I think are really cool. Of course, where we're gonna start off at is like, I'm not investing in Bitcoin. I'm not investing in Ethereum. I'm here to make a lot of money. And if we want to, then put it in Bitcoin. You know, if I don't do that. I put in a bank account or something that makes me 5% to 8% passive income per year. I'm not here to gamble once I've already won at the casino. You can do that too if you want. The biggest coin I'm gonna be getting into in the top coins is gonna be AVAX. Why? I know tons about crypto gaming. I think AVAX is gonna be the chain that a lot of crypto gaming happens on. And so, that being said, I think AVAX is probably the top biggest coin. We're gonna see a lot of normal people actually getting in mass adoption. Now, beyond all that, the main reason that I get in the AVAX is I think AVAX is gonna chase soul. It's a little brother trade to this. I think, this isn't even me hating on Cardano, I just think it's it's old news. I don't think people are gonna be FOMOing in the Cardano the same way they're gonna be FOMOing in AVAX or layer ones underneath it. I think AVAX has a really hot narrative, I think it has the marketing. And so I think if soul moves, and as a 10x, AVAX is going to do a 13 or 14x. You know, that's how they're going to move. And so Solana, I think, is going to do really well in the bull run as well. <clears throat> it has all the hype, has whatever. I think, I just think AVAX is going to chase it even more aggressively and deliver slightly higher returns. There's also this layer one that I see coming out here really soon called Monad that I've actually invested in. And I, the reason why I like it is it's like, has the easy development that Ethereum has, but also has the speed of Solana, and it actually runs on top of Ethereum, but it brings Solana-like speed to Ethereum, and I think it's gonna be absolutely a giant in gaming. It's not released yet, so please just, just keep an eye out for that. I think it's gonna be huge. And it's new, so like AVAX is already at like a $13 billion market cap, 
I could easily see it chasing up and getting to like a $10 billion market cap or something like that. I think it's going to be a really big project. And because everyone's focusing on AI and gaming and like the hot little micro caps, I think it's going to be able to slip into the market without a lot of people seeing it. Now, like always, most of my focus is on gaming crypto. Why? Not only do I think it is the, the source or the sector it's going to have the biggest potential for mass adoption, I think huge, giant, multi-billion dollar companies are adopting gaming crypto, and they're going to start pumping that too, which is going to create what I think is going to be the biggest tulip mania in all of crypto. That doesn't mean I think all these coins right here are going to come change the world. I think people are going to get absolutely drunk because a few of these coins come and change the, co the world, like one or three of them, and all these coins are going to get valuations and market caps that make absolutely no sense. But there's also some AI project and gambling project I think are going to do really well. I'm going to talk about here in a second too. So... First and foremost, if you want to really get in on the top of gaming crypto, i got to talk about Neo Tokyo real quick. This is an NFT project that myself and Elliot Trades made. And long story short, I'm not going to push it too much because almost every single big project we're going to look at right here, whether I'm invested in them or not, is inside of Neo Tokyo. Because what it is, it's the networking hub for builders and major investors in gaming crypto. And so... You get one of the NFTs, you're inside the club, and you're sitting there with founders of huge projects, people that are investing tons of money in crypto, and that's basically where you get all the alpha. A lot of the alpha I get in gaming crypto is from being an NT and just sitting in the chats and talking to other people. It just allows you to just see so many things earlier, plus you're able to get into so many seed investments early through the SitCop project, which is created by other people. That's not technically ran by Neo Tokyo, it's ran by the community. There's almost no projects I can mention where the founders are not inside of Neo Tokyo. So let's just start talking about gaming first and foremost. So IMX right off the bat, if you just wanna be the most boring game investor ever and just get good returns, it's gonna be Immutable X. Immutable X is in Neo Tokyo, by the way. So IMX sits right on top of Ethereum. It allows so many transactions, things to happen cheaply. I think there's just gonna be so many games and stuff built on it and it's all focused on games. Now, if I had to pick another top coin and gaming it's just going to be beam they're partnered with imx and this basically allows developers so many options when they're building games and so when you're investing in games the main thing i always talk about is you want to invest in, in infrastructure why because infrastructure plugs into everything so like if one game fails okay if you're just investing in that game okay well that's not so great but if you're in something that every game is using the more games are released the bigger it gets beam is the capital of that it's partnered with imx and i think it's going to be one of the most used infrastructures in gaming now, also talking about that, one of the only other really top coins that like blue chip, like just this is where you want to be coins is going to be super. Now, there's so many things coming to super that are not announced yet. I think it's going to be and it's, it's moving towards being an infrastructure coin. I'll just say that. And I think it's going to be right up there with Beam. I think it's going to chase up and right up with Beam. I think Beam can get to a multi-billion dollar market cap. I think Super can get to a billion dollar market cap. And I think these are going to be some of the top utility coins. The thing is, Super is at a much lower market cap than Beam. So I think we can see really large returns from Super, especially later on in 2024. I told everybody to get into it at eight cents. And I mean, you saw that work. When I talk about coins, particularly infrastructure coins, which is what I'm looking for. And I encourage you to look for infrastructure coins. I'm never going to tell you just get in now. I'm never going to tell you to get in now on anything because I don't feel comfortable telling people get in now. I'm telling you, use my thought process. If you want to get in crypto, there you go. I'm really confident in super. I'm holding a massive position right now and I'm not selling anything because I'm really confident in the future of super. And then the other kind of secret squirrel... Uh, that I'm in on is Myria. And I think this is some gaming infrastructure that has a lot of the potential um, to at least chase Beam or be Beam and Super's little brother right here. I think Myria is going to do really well, especially because it's a layer two scaling solution on Ethereum. Almost makes it kind of like a little secret squirrel little brother to Polygon and IMX. And so, look, IMX and them are going to be the dominant alpha gorillas in the space, but Myria has a chance to really come up behind them and then do very well right there using the same exact narratives but it's much much smaller so let's say you know imx gets to a 5x market cap where it is right now well you know mira could go and do a 10x market cap shift again if i'm looking at studios i've talked about studios so much on their videos i'm probably gonna be looking at nakamoto games i'm gonna be looking at vulcan forged i'm gonna be looking at wag me games these are really good like middle tier investments in, in gaming crypto where it's just these are the studios, they're going to be making games, and I love investing in studios, particularly ones that focus on mobile, because that's where crypto gaming is going to go. Now, if we're talking about actual games and gaming crypto, I think Alluvium is going to continue to do super well. Now, it's never going to get back to the market cap I think it was at before, last run, because this was not 
fully diluted. It's fully diluted now. And so look, the old market cap of it was $1,700. I could see getting the $500, $300, something like that. So I think Ethereum could do really, really well right here. But we're getting into individual games. I think big time is going to continue to charge. I think it actually has the same exact narrative that uh, Alluvium kind of had last born. So I think big time could do really, really well. And I'm not currently a massive investor in Alluvium or Big Time, just letting you know about them. And if we have to keep going down to other games, Star Atlas, I think, is going to do exceptionally well. It's a place I'd be putting my money at if I was looking to invest in individual games right now. And if we keep going down, Shrapnel, again, has so much hype and movement behind it. I think it's going to do super duper well as well. I've said it last video. I told people way back when. I'm like, hey, this has an Alluvium-like narrative. Way back here things done exceptionally well since then. I think it's going to keep doing well, and I think it has kind of the Alluvium narrative uh, that Alluvium had in the last bull run. I also think Citus, they, I think they have a lot of the same gameplay elements and things that are going to make it do really, really well. And they keep burning a lot of their coin. They're also launching a launch pad, so there's tons of utility for the token. So there's tons of utility for the token as well. And I think Alluvium is going to keep consistently. I think, you know, I think at least $100 million market cap, $150 million market cap is on the table for uh, Citus. And so those kind of individual games I'm looking at. Another really good infrastructure pick that I always think is going to do super well is Altura. They're partnering with so many other games to be the infrastructure for the NFTs behind them. And so it's not like a layer one infrastructure. And there's so much competition to be like the layer one, layer two of gaming. And it's IMX, Myria, super with what it has coming up. Beam, like there's a lot of good options. It's extremely competitive. We can only split things so many ways. I don't really see so much competition to provide the NFT infrastructure for games. And you have to think about the, the reason why infrastructure is so important for gaming is when you build games, you can either build your entire own NFT architecture for them, or you can just have someone else's that plugs in right away. And when a lot of people build video games, there are so many assets and code and systems and architecture in the games, so it just gets plugged in. And so building your own layer one, layer two, all these things that come with the game, it's impossible for uh, games to do, especially when they're being built, which we're going to talk about here, AI in a second, so quickly that you need existing systems to just be plugged in. I think Altura, they're doing more deals than anybody else. The team works harder than anybody else. They've been here since last bull run, so you know they're committed to it. That's just who I'm going up when it, I think about NFT and uh, NFT infrastructure. Now, like I've always talked about before, on just the whole market facing front, we want to be looking at launch pads. C to Fi and gaming is the launch pad I'm always looking at. Why? So, one, C to Fi, for example, I think is going to just do. Uh, Again, you have to think about the fully diluted market caps, okay? This was not fully diluted. It is fully diluted now. So I can see, you know, six, eight, ten dollars $10 Fi happening. I don't, I don't, 16 is going to be really, really hard to push. You know, we'll be at about a billion dollar market cap at $10. Actually, about 600000 And I think CDFI has the potential to do that because they're not just a launch pad anymore. It's a studio. It's an incubation and the things they're doing with NFTs are absolutely huge. And so there's so much utility on top of it being a launch pad for all the best games. And so it's just such an easy pick because when the bull run picks off, kicks off, like truly, this is we're not in a bull run right now. Not like in a hype, like everyone's drunk foaming at the mouth. This is not 2020. It's nothing like it. C Defy is going to go nuts because everybody's going to get in the launch pad and all the other things they get people access for. It's like the king of access in gaming. So that's where I would be at. Now, the other place I'd be looking at, and again, this is my own project, so I don't try to really talk about this too much. But again, Bytes on what Neo Tokyo runs about. Neo Tokyo is the absolute king of access to other people inside of crypto gaming, alpha, finding things early, knowing what's going on. If, if you're investing in crypto gaming, you're not in Neo Tokyo. I'm not even being biased right here. You're just massively behind. If, if you're in a room full of all the founders, all the major investors, and people with a lot of skin in the game by the thousands, you're going to do better than someone who's not. The end. That being said, Bytes powers the whole entire thing. And it also about pow and it also powers the launch pad that the community made that allows you to get access to tons of seed investments. So as soon as the blower picks up and people want access to these seed investments because they're like the easiest 20, 30 Xs in crypto, I think they're going to pile on the bytes. And then finally, I want to use this logic with outside of gaming. So I don't like to breach outside of gaming too much. That being said, there is other launch pads and there's other parts of crypto that are going to be nuclear. There's so much different technology that is being built all over the place. 
which I don't know too much about because I my strategy in crypto is just focus on one thing, master that one area, know everything that's going on. So if you ask me anything that's going on in gaming crypto or anything that's new that's coming out that's going to make a lot of money, I can tell you about that just off the top of my head. I know it instantly because I only focus on one place. That being said, that is like 2% of all of crypto. Paid, I think, is going to have access to all the best drops it's going to have a lot in gaming, but it's going to have all the access to drops outside of gaming as well. And while it doesn't apply to me too much, people are going to be clamoring at the mouth to get into these things. And paid right now is still extremely small, especially where it peaked out at last bull run. Market cap being close to $400 million. We're at $27 million right now, which is one of the reasons why I'm a major investor and in paid. And I'm working with them a lot right now and advised in them because I think this, I think it's going to do super duper well just based on this principle alone. And I think they're going to be the dominant launch pad outside of gaming. So I'm all in on paid. And I think what Kyle is doing with the 2.0 launch right here, that he's going to be talking about here real soon. I think it's going to blow people's minds with everything they're doing and the access and ease people are able to get into paid is better than any other launch pad, which is going to make a lot of people clamor into it. And so I think it's going to be the trifecta launch pad outside of gaming. Plus Kyle, the founder knows literally everybody. And the key to running a good launch pad is knowing literally everybody which he's fantastic at. So I'm all about paid. And then if we're going back to gaming real quick, one of the, and also not completely tied into gaming, I'm really big in Inspect right now. They just went live and then finally, the whole volatility from the drop. So I, they dropped about here last month. And I told everybody like, hey, hey, I really like this project, but don't be getting in right here. You can see the massive volatility there is when an ICO happens. That's why I was super duper careful. I was like, I like, I like the project, but chill, wait. The whole volatility is now stopped with Inspect and what Inspect allows businesses to do is to plug their games and their projects seamlessly into social media. It can even allow them to plug straight into the Twitter feed so that people can actually run a lot of the things that they're doing with their projects, with their users, straight into the Twitter feeds. It's really cool, you should check it out. And now it's actually slowed down a whole lot. Again, when I'm looking at infrastructure and gaming, I like to also not just find big infrastructure and everyone's doing a layer one, layer two or whatever. There's only so much room for those, and there's so many of them. There are not many people building unique infrastructure, and Inspect is extremely unique infrastructure without plugs in the socials. And if we're really looking at the key to all of crypto, it's the socials. That's where narratives are born, that's where they die. If something's not being talked about in social media and, and crypto, it dies. Why? It's because crypto is, again, narrative investing. Look at my buying and selling video. Now, moving on to another niche that I'm getting into a lot right now. The first big investment that I've actually made in AI has been in PAL. Why PAL? So it's a chatbot, AI chatbot, I'm sure you've seen it. It's fueled by this coin that also does profit sharing. So there's like a reason to actually hold the coin and keep it long term. So the reason why I'm in with PAL is one, these are just two extremely in demand things. We have an actual technology that people are using, plus profit sharing. And PAL has probably one of the larger narratives in AI right now. It's just a good, big, chunky, large coin. And the thing I really like about it is the fully diluted market cap. It's just right here. This 138 million uh, market cap is 107 million. So we know there isn't like some big crushing dump coming that you're going to see in projects that have huge market, uh, diluted market caps. So I, the first big one I'm getting in on is just PAL. It's just a big, easy investment in AI. It's not one of the little micro ones that you can go in and it's all sneaky. It's just a big, clean, nice addition to a portfolio. There is another product that I'm getting really into right now. It has not launched yet called GPU, called GPU. And the reason why I'm really looking into AI a whole lot, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in future vids, because I'm just really starting to invest here, because I did start an AI company this year, I actually ended up closing down. But one of the problems that we ran into constantly with it is getting GPUs and processing power uh, for AI. And the way you run the companies is you have to be able to rent the processing power or you just have to buy the servers outright and make a server from, which is ridiculously expensive. It's so much better to rent, but it becomes a real hassle because you have to like split it with other people and whatnot. And crypto as a whole allows you to decentralize that process and allow the renting and usage of GPUs via the spending of coins on the project. So this is a project that's coming up, GPU, and I think that's something you should look out for. It hasn't launched yet. AI is not as big and hypey as gaming right now. So when that drops, you might be able to sneak into it. So that's one other thing I'd be looking at. Then finally, the last place I'm looking in before I get into just totally new projects is just going to be gambling. And I've already talked about this last video. I think gambling is just going to be absolutely huge. I think when, I, I think all 
gambling is going to eventually move towards crypto because if you ever use a gambling site, it's just, it's, a, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. I've been using gambling sites for like 10 years. It's always nonsense. So the places where I'm looking at right now, again, I think blockchain bets has the sports betting part of it. It's a sports betting crypto. It's well put together. The team knows what they're doing and there's profit sharing again behind it. So there's a reason to actually hold the coin long term. You put all those things together, it's the easy one to go with. When it comes to poker, online poker, again, I think it's gonna be huge, duh. I think Virtue Poker is the best team. It has the best user, it has the best user experience. That's where people are playing right now. They're already having tons of tournaments. It's already live and working. People are coming and actively adopting it. And so I think that's the place where people are gonna play poker at. There are a lot of other good poker projects. I'm invested in Virtue Poker. That's the one I'm all behind, but poker is actually pretty good too, if I can spell it correctly. This is another one right there. And I think between those two, we're going to have the winner. I'm pretty much all in on Virtue Poker Day. And then finally, the really interesting investment I just moved to is actually Crown. I'm super duper invested in it. I've gone big in the Crown recently. I also reached out and said, let me advise the project and have a pretty damn big bag in it. So I'm not going to lie. The reason is there's a lot of horse racing cryptos right now, but I haven't seen one do it as well as Crown did. They're partnered with all the major horse racing league, horse racing leagues associations. I don't know too much about that and how those work. They are partnered with all of them. They've solved the NFT issue. A lot of horse racing sims, uh, they, they dropped NFTs. There isn't breeding. There isn't a way to actually make it work long-term. This absolutely crushed it right there. So I think the NFT side of it is gonna do very, very well. And the way the token works is it's like through track ownership. And so you can actually make profits by running it. So it creates this whole entire like business ecosystem inside of it, the NFTs, the way the token is done, the actual presentation, the partnerships and how they're gonna make it go mainstream. I think this thing is going to be absolutely huge. And I think digital horse racing, I've been super horny for it for years. And I think this is the, like we got Zed Run that started at first, but there's so many issues with how the NFTs were dropped and done. And there's so many problems with how it was built that this makes it kind of go in a slow decline, kind of similar to what we kind of saw with uh, a lot of early projects in crypto gaming. I think Crown is going to do stupid well. And then finally, let's talk about a few things that are coming up that I think are going to be huge. Now, there's so many projects I'm always seed investing in, particularly there are a lot of them are coming through Neo Tokyo as well. So again, join Neo Tokyo, at least get an S2 or something like that. If you're interested in things, if you're not in the gaming crypto and you don't want to do this seriously, by all means, stay out. That's fine. But if you're interested in that, like, go for it. You're not buying NFTs from me. You're buying it from other members. You can see what they value it at. But a few games that are coming up here really soon. Bloodloop is dropping here really soon. And I think it's probably going to be one of the bigger drops this month. And, and when these games drop, I have to super duper stress. Remember what I showed you with Inspect. There's going to be tons of volatility when they come. And so the, the best way to lose your butt as a new crypto investor is you get in these games right when they drop. So I like talking about them like a month before they come and then like a few months after they drop. I'm probably going to be super mum and quiet about this when it comes out because I don't want you to get burned and eaten alive. And so I'm just telling you right now, watch it, watch it. I think it's going to be probably one of the bigger drops. And I don't think you should, that's, that's a bad thing for you. You don't want to FOMO into this when it drops. And a lot of Neo Tokyo members were able to get into the seed investment of this through Neo Tokyo. So that's cool for them. But if you're on the outside, like you don't want to be FOMOing into these things when they drop. But I think it's going to do exceptionally well. And I think it's probably going to be one of the bigger drops of January when it comes out. Chrono Forge is another game I'm looking at right now. It's just exceptionally well done. Everything inside of it looks good. And one of my favorite genres, if I'm going to play, is roguelikes. And I think crypto ties in super well with a roguelike -like game because assets are destroyed. And having the assets has value. It's not like some game where everything's infinite, thus the, the assets get grinded into zero. You have to have some type of scarcity and stuff being destroyed. And roguelikes work super duper well with that because then you lose all your assets. And so I think it ties in super well with that. And I think they're probably building one of the better roguelikes right now while you're playing with people as well. And so I think the experience of coming together with your friends, going, and I think the cooler part is you die and lose all your crap giving all sorts of weird like gameplay elements because the crap you just lost is worth a lot and someone can come and take that crap and sell to someone it's just there's there's all sorts of really neat things going on with that crying forge is going to be dropping pretty soon i'd watch it again i get really quiet about these things when they actually do drop other thing i'm just going to tap on once again watch 
Gunzella, and Off the Grid. It's probably going to be the biggest gaming drop this year. There's already some pre-sales and early investing inside of Neo Tokyo, but Gunzilla is going to absolutely slay it. And another one I've just got involved with that I'm really excited about is Pixelmon. And everybody's been like, Pixelmon, isn't that that thing that like they raised like $100 million and released those awful looking NFTs? Yes, it's exactly that one. Why? They turn it around and you have to think about a few things with Pixelmon. One, they have they got like $100 million invested. That meant they were able to go and hire and, and get the right people to actually build the game. Two, everybody knows what goddamn Pixelmon is. It has just massive brain awareness. So even before we get into the game, I think it's going to do tremendous numbers in market cap and investment wise, simply because everybody knows about Pixelmon. It's just a brand name. It's like a household name in gaming crypto. You mind with the fact that it's actually turning out pretty damn well. Um... I think we have just a nuclear bomb right here. So I'm all about Pixelmon right now. It's coming later this year, the coin, the drops, and everything like that. So I'm all about it. And so that, my, my enthusiastic friends on the internet, that is what I am looking at right now. That is what I think the market is doing. And so to recap the video, I think the market is going to be boring. Every, every, I know every crypto influencer is like, oh, get in now. They do it for the views and the clicks. And don't get me wrong. I like the clicks and the views. And I'm not poo-pooing on them, but I just don't have the time and energy to sit here and act like I'm excited about something that, that when I'm not actually excited. I think the market's going to be boring as crap for the next couple months. It might not be, and it might zoom up, and I'm going to make a video. I'm going to be throwing my shirt around, telling you I'm going down the Chuck E. Cheese to see all the manlets, but I think it's going to suck. Which means we have plenty of time to get into a lot of projects, and while you didn't catch this huge rise up right now, I think we have some pretty good buy points coming, especially if we dip a little bit more. I'm really excited about gaming, those few little projects outside of it that I mentioned, and then gambling and AI. That is, if, if you're looking at my character, my World of Warcraft crypto talent tree, that's where I'm specced into and that's where I'm sticking. I think it's going to do exceptionally well. It's done exceptionally well for us so far. I'm not changing the game plan. I'm just sitting here just being a boring, boring, boring crypto investor and squatting because I, I think 2024, later this year or 2025, so that's all I have to say. If you want to get updates on stuff sooner, I, I don't always have time to make these videos. My real job is running software companies. Follow me at ZSS Becker, where I talk about everything that's happening in crypto much faster. If you're actually interested in me, life advice, for example, I've built nine figure software companies. I've achieved good health and I know how to put my brain together to get what I want out of life. Follow me on Instagram because that's where all like my health and business and growth advice is there. And as stupid as these videos are, my main skill set is actually growing businesses, which I've made hundreds of, which is, which has grown my net worth to hundreds of millions of dollars. So you should go there. I won't even sell you a course or anything. That's on Instagram at 4am Becker. That's all I have. I've talked too long. Goodbye.